Hi, I'm Landon. I'm a creative at Apple Grand Central in New York City. And this is Creative Projects. Today, we're going to be shooting and editing otherworldly photos in night mode using iPhone. We're gonna go on a little nighttime photo adventure and I'm gonna ask Maria Lax to join us. Maria Lax is a Finnish photographer based in London. Her photos are mystical and magical and they've all got this incredible storytelling aspect that I'm trying to capture in my own photography. We'll learn about the steps she takes to achieve this otherworldly look and we're gonna see what we can create together. Hey, Maria, thank you so much for taking the time to connect with me today. Absolutely. I am so impressed with your work. What is it about night photography that you're drawn to? Well, where I'm from is basically the Arctic Circle in Northern Finland. So there's a lot of forest, not a lot of people. So a lot of my photography is spent by myself in the woods, creating my own little worlds. And that's kind of like reimagining real locations so that they appear unreal. And to me, nighttime is perfect for that because even like the most mundane spot looks different. How would you feel about stepping outside to capture some night photos together using your process? That sounds amazing. I don't really shoot in London that much. So like any excuse to get out there and get shooting, that sounds really fun. I'm really excited to learn more about night photography because my regular process relies on finding what's obvious and apparent and now I'm going for something a little bit more mysterious. The first element of photography for me is finding light. So find light sources that look good, have interesting color, whatever like is calling your name, go towards that light. What I really like is like different colored windows. I love doing like wider shots, but then like focusing on a window or a detail and it's almost telling a story. Night mode is incredibly light sensitive. I love that. So step one is finding an amazing light source. Make some magic. Oh, it smells not good, not cute. The interesting part about night mode is that iPhone can detect light in your frame and turns on night mode automatically for you. Depending upon how much darkness there is, you might want to add more capture time to capture more light which means whenever you see auto versus max, you might want to bump it up to max just to give yourself more time to let in more light. When I use night mode, I find that sometimes the colors are like so vibrant, even more colors than I think I can actually see in life. Oh, it's my favorite, it's more red light. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. The second thing is to experiment with something that can make it really unique. Just like finding that unusual way to approach a very basic thing like a tree. I like putting stuff in front of the lens and just seeing what happens. I've just got this bit of thin plastic. Trial and error sometimes looks awful. I'm gonna try and put flash on and see what happens if I just flash into the branches. I think when we edit that, that might look really, really nice. Want to like really push the contrast and stuff. I've got a couple of objects in my bag to experiment with. I grabbed a piece of silverware and it had the, like a shiny surface. Y'all see that? It's catching the light perfectly. Yes, we're in business. What I might actually do is take a bit of Vaseline at this point and just getting a thin piece of plastic and putting the Vaseline on that to kind of create blur. Sometimes I've used lipstick as well, but definitely do not put it on the lens because it's really hard to get off. Sometimes it gives it a bit of softness and then sometimes, yeah, it's quite an otherworldly effect that it does. Definitely some alien abduction stuff going on in this shot. Might have to flip the shot and post to kind of make it make more sense. I'm just kind of playing around with this mesh. The material's fun, it adds a cool texture and that's really what I wanted was just something to kind of give me a fog, misty look. I don't know if it's gonna work, but you gotta risk it for the biscuit. Nowadays, there's so much pressure to be perfect and pressure to be immediately good at everything that you do. The thing that is easily forgotten is that nobody's gonna just go out and shoot perfect photo one after the other. And that's fine. That's how you get to the good stuff, by just going the hard way through the mistakes. I don't have any Vaseline, but I definitely have a lot of breath. So let's try it. <laughs> I probably look crazy. 
Wait, that's great. Kind of stinking moody. I feel really good about the shots that I got tonight. Like, I did not expect to have that many great shots. The third thing is editing the photo, taking the photos and seeing how you like reach the full potential of that image. I'm going to do the photo of the tree. The photo looks a bit funny, so the tree's kind of like sideways, but the light's also coming from the side, and I say I might flip it. I'm just going to crop the image a little bit. There's like a bit of the branch that I really don't want to see. So now that's cropped. So I've got the gel in front of the lens, and that added the color, and it added a bit of blur. I might add a tiny bit of contrast. Because there's like a light leak coming in, which I like. And now that I flip it, the light leak comes from above, which is like aliens. <laughs> I'm just going to go crazy with the color. You know? I'm going to get really, really, really strong saturation. When you get a bit scared and a bit shook that it looks too much, then take it a notch down and then you're perfect. You know what I'm also going to do? You know, like vignetting, like you usually use it to make the edges darker. I'm just gonna make them a little bit lighter to see if I can create like almost like a leaked film look. And done. This is great. I love seeing you play around and it really just makes me want to have more fun with my photography in general. Everybody can be creative. Just go out there and you'll get amazing stuff and you'll get better at it as you go. I love that. There's this myth of creativity is that like, oh, some people are creative and some people are not. That's not true. Absolutely. You are speaking my love language right now. I'm Good. like, I'm writing this down. I'm like getting all blushed because like that's what I'm passionate about. I'm like, right. Amazing. Thank you so much for your wisdom. Awesome. Bye. Bye. And that, my friends, is how you shoot and edit otherworldly photos on iPhone. I found that good lighting and clever framing really transported me out of everyday locations and into these dreamy supernatural spaces. Next, I tried out some things to add an extra layer of depth to my photos as I was taking them. And the last step was to play with colors in the edit process to give my photos that otherworldly element. Thank you all so much for watching, creating, and trying something new today. Remember, we'll be adding episodes regularly, so feel free to subscribe. Also, give us a like if you liked it. And as always, keep an eye out for today at Apple Sessions and Apple stores near you. The Sessions and our creatives are all there to help you get more creative using your devices, whether that be taking a great photo, making a cool video, or even writing a line of code. Remember that if you're sharing photos, the best way for us to see them is if you use the hashtag today at Apple. Until next time, stay creative. Ciao for now.